Just... It'll be a first down, the ball at the 34. Jackson moves back into the top of the eye. The fullback is Chris Kirby, number 36. Leads the blocking. Bounced incomplete. Pass was intended for number five, Brendan Cook. Jason Black, John Miller, Kevin Tucker, the Aggie defensive line. Well, Black's been a good one, a 6'3", 260-pound senior, three letterman. Linebackers, Buckley, Anthony Williams, Quentin Coriat, William Thomas. Boy, Williams, of course, the leading tackler in 89 and leading tackler in 90. And the DBs, Kevin Smith, a man to watch, Chris Prunes, Larry Horton, and Derek Frazier. Boy, holds all kind of interception records for the Aggies. It's a good defensive backfield. Second down and 10. Edie Jackson is told to move over by Grovey. And he gives him the ball, and he spins off, but gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. No gain on the play. Marcus Buckley, the first to trip him up. It'll be third down. Yeah, they tried to bring him back on a little counter play, and you can obviously see what uh, Arkansas's plan is going to be. They want to stay on the ground a little bit, show short possession type passes in this game. Jack Crow, the head coach in his rookie year as the head coach. And R.C. Slocum in his second year. Both had distinguished careers as top assistants. Third down and just about 10, 39. E.D. Jackson in motion. Two Jackson, too high, incomplete, and the Razorbacks will give it up. The Aggies will receive the punt. Well, he's a little frustrated. Quinn's a little frustrated himself. He knew that the receiver was open over there. But even if he had completed it, I don't think it was downfield far enough for the first down, Greg, but that could have been a completable pass. The punter is Peter Rather, who is a baseball pitcher for Arkansas, had some shoulder problems and started punting a couple of weeks ago. And he's done a fine job. And look at the boomer here. That's going all the way back to the 20. Fair catch. And there'll be no return by... The Aggies, number 80, that was Shane Garrett. That's where a &M will put the ball in play, and they're just outside their own 20. Well, and he had the opportunity to make a return on that one. He was back there pretty much by himself. The Aggie was in front of him. Should have told him he had plenty of room. He had to kind of get a little help from, the, from your teammate. Sometimes people blame the guy for signaling a fair catch, but he has to hear from someone else that maybe he's got a clear field. Bucky Richardson leads the offense. Of course, missed most of last year with, with an injury. Several changes in the offensive line. There's a give to Darren Lewis, and Lewis gets about three up to about the 24-yard line. Bucky Richardson's numbers this year. Now, the, the big story is not his passing. It's the total offense, and particularly when you toss in that he rushed for 180 yards in the last game. Backs and receivers, Wilson, Lewis, Garrett, Oliver, Ransom. And obviously, Lewis will carry the ball probably 30 times in the game today. Second down, seven. Garrett in motion. This is Lewis. Big hole, first down. Across to the 43. Ball loose, and it is picked up by Arkansas. Krug with the football, and he gets it back up across the 40. Darwin Ireland to the 38 line. And that's the type of thing that Biles Arkansas has to have if they're going to have a, a shot. That's exactly right. That's a turnover that they want because the Aggies will run the ball against this defense has given up a lot of yardage. Of course, Lewis breaks through the hole. Great blocking by the offensive line. He's out in open field now. Gets in trouble. And looks like he just it almost looks like he was down when that ball popped out of there, Greg. I thought one of the officials ruled he was down, but Arkansas's ball. Ben Floor, I think, is the one who made the hit, and then the return by linebacker Ireland, and the ball is on the 38-yard line. First down. The pitch to Jackson, and Jackson sneaks past one tackler and gets up to the 34-yard line. Marcus Buckley finally making the hit after a cup of just about four. E.D. Jackson, one of two Jacksons. R.C. Slocum. Well, I think he's hot at the official over there thinking that the official should have blown the ball down on uh, Lewis's run. E.D. Jackson, who had that last carry, averages just three yards a carry. But he's been the workhorse early, second down and seven. And again, E.D. Jackson. And he gets a couple, and that's it. Hit head on by Quentin Coriat, who put a hat on him. And it'll be a short gain. It'll be third down. 
Corriott has had a good year, and he's had some injury problems. Oh, he's an outstanding junior linebacker. Let's see the lead blocker, but he goes away from where the hole was supposed to be run. Designed to go out to the left. He breaks it back to the right. Corriott reads it perfectly, held his gap, stepped up in there, and made the tackle. Arkansas with a wide man top, Tracy Caldwell. Russell wide to the near side on third down and five. And a sack. And that is the sack master, William Thomas. Willie T. That's his 13th sack of the year, Greg. 13 sacks, 26 quarterback pressures, five tackles for loss. He's in the other team's backfield more than the running backs. Well, they split him out, and of course, all the receivers out there. You see Thomas coming from the left of your screen on a blitz from that left side. And open clean, and no one there to block him. So the Razorbacks cannot take advantage of the turnover, and Rayther will boom one deep. This one could be killed inside the five. No, it gets through into the end zone. It'll come back out to the 20. We'll be back. We have no score on our SOS telecast, the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Texas A&M Aggies. Aggies will put the ball in play on their own 20. Rocky Richardson, the quarterback. He's got a single setback in the backfield. Slot man and two wideouts, and it goes to the lone running back. That's Lewis, and, or take that back. That's number 20 for AM into the lineup. That's Robert Wilson. The fullback was the only running back in the backfield. Let's take a look at the Arkansas defensive line. Roland, Owen Kelly, and Scott Long. Well, Roland's been a great one from Sherman, Texas. Senior, 300, six foot three, 265 pounder. Darwin Ireland, Ken Benson, Ty Mason, and Mick Thomas are the linebackers. Nick, Nick Thomas, the leading tackler. James Delchun, Ben Floor, Curtis Banks. Several changes there. Ben Floor had been out for a while, but he's back. This is Darren Lewis, and he's trapped up at about the 30-yard line, but it's a first down. Ty Mason and Darwin Ireland on the tackle. He's got enough. Well, if you can run the ball every second down and pick up that first down, you just ought to continue running it on down the field. And I'm sure that's what the Aggie game plan will be. Just run, run, run till Arkansas proves that they can stop the running game. The thing about... Lewis that has been so impressive is 148.8 yards a game and averaging only about 10 carries in the second half. The Aggies have had some leads and he hadn't run the ball as much. Bucky Richardson, a lot of room, throws anyway and it's complete for a first down. That was to Gary Oliver, his 17th reception of the year across the 45-yard line. Well, that was very similar to the same type of pass the uh, Arkansas ran. He fakes the play action one way, going to roll out on a bootleg by himself to the right. Looks like he could have run the ball for almost the same amount of yardage. And all uh, Oliver did was from the outside, he went down, curled to the inside, and the slot receiver went to the outside, wide open. If that play works as it did there, he's going to have another 180-yard opportunity. Speaking of Richardson, Patterson in motion, or Garrett rather in motion, and the give goes to Lewis. And he fights forward to about the 48-yard line. Short gain. Ty Mason, the junior from Decatur, Illinois, making the tackle. And I think that's exactly the type of game we're going to see, Greg. All these runs and a little bit of play action, a little bit of boot action, possession-type passes rather than going for the long bomb early in this game. Eight minutes and 55 seconds to go in the first quarter. No score. Texas A&M and Arkansas. A&M now three yards away from its first penetration into Arkansas territory on the Aggies' second possession. Wilson to the 45-yard line, and that looks like that may be enough for another first down when they unpile. Curtis Banks making the tackle. I think they're going to give him a short spot, Greg. I think it's going to be about a, maybe a length of the ball or a half yard short. And Wilson, see the hole and see the great off offensive blocking job that the Aggies' line is doing. He had to go about a half yard beyond that line, and they put the ball right on the line. That's a good spot, as you saw, where the ball came down. From Houston Worthing High School, it's third down and about a foot. Super average, but he is a great blocker. Richardson with the quarterback keep, the first down for Texas A&M. Ty Mason plugs the gap, but not until the first down. Well, I don't think there's any question he made the first down on this, especially when they... Moved the ball up. He only needed about the length of the football. And right now, everything is going exactly the way the Aggie game plan was designed. Run it, hang on to it. Reveille made the trip. Reveille's even happy. Ball is on the 43, first down in Arkansas territory. Ben Floor comes up 
from his safety spot on the near side. May have been a play change. They're going to go away from it on a quick pass. Short game. Patterson, and he's brought down right about the 40-yard line. Garrett with the reception from Richardson. Michael James making the tackle. I don't think there's any question. The audible to that play immediately saw the safety move over. Ben Floor move over from his middle free safety position up the line in the blitzing position. He knew he had single coverage out there, Richardson, and just made pitch and catch with Shane Garrett. A gain of about three. It'll be second and seven. During the seven-minute mark in the first quarter, no score. Lewis is... Actually, the first man get to him was Owen Kelly, the nose guard. He got him around the ankles, and that gave him nowhere to go except his fall forward. That's about what he got, body length. It's going to be third. Boy, well, missed a hole, Greg. There, if he'd come out to the left there, there was a hole. There's a hole big enough. Watch to the left of where this ball goes. Watch the hole to the left. For some reason, he runs it inside. Take a look at it up to the, to, to the left. Of, well, no, I, I'll take that back. 91 slipped right down in the line there and made that play. Aggie Crowd wants the... Six yards to be picked up on third. Lewis in motion. Richardson escapes initially, but is dragged down by number 42, Ken Benson, the Wichita, Kansas senior. Nice defensive play by the linebacker. Well, when you get the third down situation, they anticipate passing them. Arkansas going to do their fair share of blitzing. Of course, there's a miss right there, but what Benson with his speed come backside and pick it up. Senior playing his last game. Now, those 20 seniors on Arkansas's team are going to lay it on the line for him today. Fourth down, so the Aggies will be looking to return the punt. And the ball goes in and out of the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 when we return. No score with 5.53 to play in Fayetteville. Greg Lucas back along with Ed Biles. Bill Land on the field. We have no score as both teams have exchanged punts in their last series. And it will be Arkansas putting the ball in play on its own 20-yard line with 5.53 to go in the first quarter. Well, you just knew, Greg, that Arkansas was going to make this their game of the year. They've been struggling all season. This could salvage something if they could come up for an upset the, uh, the Aggies in this game today. They're really hustling and doing everything the way you want them to do them right now from the Razorback standpoint. Razorbacks have this game and one more. This is the last home game. They've got the 24th at SMU. And that may be the only thing that keeps them from a winless conference season. Of course, they think that today they can uh, put one on the board. We've said it all year. They've, they've had a lot of injuries. They've gotten down to what I think Jack Crow was telling us a couple of weeks ago, Ed, that at one point they had 72 scholarship players. That's awfully tough. Yeah, it really is. They lost a lot of them. You're playing, they're playing an awful lot of freshmen in the football game today. Whenever you play those, uh, you know, that amount of, that number of freshmen, they started six freshmen in this game today. They got 13 freshmen on their two deep uh, roster. But they're getting valuable experience next year and the following year standpoint. Well, the Rice Owls put up a valiant fight, but uh, could not go over the 500 mark. Baylor squeezed by them today, 17 to 16. And the Bears are still alive uh, for a bowl play. Price with the carry that time for a short gain of about a yard. It'll be second down. Good price, Terry. Kerwin Price for Arkansas is a junior from East St. Louis, Illinois, six feet, 220 pounds. Never been completely healthy, although he has been pretty much this year. Now we've got a whistle. The clock never started. That's the problem. It still says 553. Okay. That's what it said when we took our break. I have a feeling that these uh, this Arkansas senior group and this football team was reminded that the Aggies have not won in Fayetteville since 1967, that they don't want right. to be the team to break that string. They've only won a couple times in the state. So it's uh, it's been Arkansas when the games are played here, that's for sure. And of course, the Razorbacks are two-time defending Cotton Bowl and Southwest Conference uh, representatives in the Cotton Bowl, Southwest Conference champs. 
The Razorbacks will play football in the Southwest Conference one more year. The basketball that is being played this season is the last year in the Southwest Conference before they move into the Southeastern Conference. Still trying to get things squared away. There have been some electrical problems in the press area prior to our telecast. That young man is oblivious to all of that. He came right out of those hills we drove through today, Greg, coming up that Route 71 from Fort Smith up there. Pretty drive. It's uh, the one that uh, Frank Broyles says is why they don't play as many night games here because his fans have to take that drive and warning signs all the way about how many people have met their fate driving through the hills. But it is very pretty, especially the daytime. Yeah, it truly was with the leaves changing the color. And, but it was windy and turn after turn. I noticed, though, you just relaxed and allowed me to do the driving and yeah, took like a little snooze. I let you take those turns at uh, on two wheels. Bill Land is down on the field, so let's go down to Bill. Thanks, Greg. You guys are right on. Uh, first of all, on the early turnover, Coach R.C. Slocum and the staff upset the officials. Uh, they thought they missed one there, thought the play was dead. And uh, one of the uh, sideliners here on AM side said something about, that guy's been doing that to us all year. And he wasn't talking about the Arkansas team. He's talking about the official. The offensive line, on the other hand, uh, just went through a little blitz session with uh, their coaching staff to try to handle the problem there. And according to the coaches here, that uh, Arkansas is not doing anything to stop them. It's simply a matter of, uh, matter of a and shooting itself in the foot. Thank you very much, Bill. Of course, one of the great advantages of our special order sports uh, telecasts is that uh, we afford the opportunity to keep you in tabs. 13.39 yards coming into this year. That is the second best of his four years. Of course, he had an off year, somewhat of an off year last year, less than 1,000. Of course, he has three games to go. Earl Campbell holds the rushing record for one year of 1,744 yards. He needs 405 yards in these three games to replace Earl Campbell as the Southwest Conference best rushing leader for one year. Now, here's a guy that, because the Aggies did not get off to the kind of start a lot of people thought they might, and has fallen somewhat in the Heisman Trophy balloting, but as far as running backs are concerned, in the year he has had, he certainly is, uh, is capable. But the team record may be the thing that's hurting him, and even though the team record is not bad and could end up to being as good as 8-2-1. and one. Well, if he continues on that pace, uh, Greg, that he's going, then he could wind up with, well, actually, Tony Dorsett, Charlie White, Herschel Walker, and Archie Griffin. All of them went over 5,000 yards, and they all won the Heisman Trophy. At this rate, he could be the first one, if he doesn't win the Heisman, to go over 5,000 and not win it. Second down, eight. First down for Grovey. To the 48-yard line. Chris Crooms finally rides him down, but Grovey showing the versatility and speed. Well, it runs the option keep into the short sideline. Maybe audible to this play. When he saw the adjustment the Aggies had made, there's a fake to the fullback inside, takes it out. Now he gets a little block there. He steps, cuts back up underneath a great block in there. One of the offensive linemen, Ray Straczynski, did a good job opening the hole up for him. As soon as he saw that daylight, turned up field, picked up big yardage. He has now gone into second place, by the way, for total offense in a single season at Arkansas. E.D. Jackson meets resistance at midfield, and he stopped after a two-yard gain. Albert Jones, one of the first to meet him. Albert's had some injury problems this year, knee problems. Bucky Richardson loosening the arm on the sideline, waiting for the next time the Ags have the football. Richardson, of course, has one more year. With his redshirt year, he will be a senior next year. Second down, eight. Contact in the line and flags. And that looks like John Miller says, yeah, it was me. Listen to that quarterback's voice. Rather than watching the football, it was right in front of him. Just, just a very difficult thing here. Defensive line coach has told him over and over. Greg Madison has told him thousands of times, don't listen to the quarterback's voice. Just watch the football right in front of you. And every once in a while, you just start guessing a little bit. 
Well, after the five yard pickup, a play change. Bryant comes in with the play, and uh, leaving was Russell. Bramp is wide to the near side and in motion. But the give goes to Jackson, and he's going to be, looks like, short by about a yard. It'll be third down and one as he gets up to about the 42 or 3. Anthony Williams, who leads the club in tackles, makes the first hit for AM. And we shall see exactly where they spot it, and it will be just a tad short. Well, they need less than a half yard. Of course, Groovy, his running ability in this situation, very easy for him just to sneak for this type of yardage. Instead, the wide option, and they blow it. E.D. Jackson doesn't handle the pitch. It goes out of bounds, and it'll be fourth down. Well, sometimes you, sometimes you outthink yourself. Instead of taking a short first down, you can see it could have went right to the right of the center, that little gap. Decided to gamble for a big gainer. Comes out on the option. Good penetration in there by Jason Black. Forces the bad pitch. And, of course, that's a fourth down. Jackson had good field presence and knocked the ball out, uh, ball out of bounds, so the Aggies couldn't recover. Arkansas forced to punt. Raider the punter gets another high arching punt down to about the 10 yard line. And that will not be returned far as a short return by Shane Garrett after a couple yards. Eric Browning the first to hit him. We'll take a break and return. No score into the first. It's not the end of the first. Remember, they aren't using that clock that we showed you at the end of what we thought was the end of the period. According to what we're trying to Devolts from the hand signals. There are about two minutes left in the first quarter. Kind of hard to look up at the scoreboard down there and see oh, 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 and not think <laughs> it was the end of the quarter. That's reacted the way I reacted, Greg. Greg, another interesting point about the punt coverage of, of Arkansas. Their opponents are averaging better than 14 yards returning punts against them, so there is a possibility that Aggies might break one out of there before the day is over. I think that's one of the reasons why Rayther took over as the punter three games ago. He has uh, got good. He hangs it up there pretty good, and it's it's tough to really get a good return. That last punt, he had a hang time of 4.3. I put the stopwatch on it. First down on the 18 for Texas A&M. No score. Lewis. Nice initial hole, but didn't make much extra with it up to about the 21. Ty Mason closed it up from the linebacker position. One thing about running the ball, the way they're running it, quarters will go awful quick if they continue to run the ball that way. Even though we won't know it because we can't tell how much time is left. <laughs> Second down and five. Closer to six, actually. Too much. Garrett was the intended receiver, but James was right there. And too much on it. Bucky Richardson's numbers for this game. You saw the, the numbers for the season earlier. They're not impressive, but part of that's because he rarely throws the ball. 38 for 80, only 47 and a half percent. And a guy in that situation runs an option. They tend to, when they do throw it, to throw long. And that's going to keep your percentage down. Third down, five or six. Escaping the sack, Richardson won't have enough room, and he stopped short of the first down at the 25-yard line. So the Aggies will have to give it up. Mason and Kelly were the first to get to him. Well, they're going to blitz him on an obvious third down passing situation. They're going to bring all the folks they can. That forces a lot of pressure, and uh, obviously with his interception ratio, from Arkansas' standpoint, that's exactly the situation they want to get the Aggies into. Pat Burris and Dean Peavy are the back to return the punt. Burris, number 13, at the 23. He gets about five up to about the 27 or eight brought down by Ramsey Bradbury and it'll be first down. Let's go down to Bill Land on the sidelines. 
You guys aren't the only ones confused about the clock. I think the players and the coaches are also uh, a little bit confused. They keep glancing up and seeing zero up there. The back judge is notifying the coaches every two minutes of the time situation. I don't think it's a big problem, Matt, until you get down to the end of the half, and then it could really get uh, kind of scary either sideline. Hopefully their electricians uh, will have figured out the problem by then, but you're right. Well, the one, th one advantage, the 25-second clock is still functioning properly, so the quarterback has no reason not to look up there and watch the 25-second clock so they don't get caught for delay of the game. Ball on the 29, first down. Edie Jackson drops back into the top of the eye, and he'll take the pitch. Spinning forward across the 30 to perhaps the 32-yard line, a gain of maybe three. I think that's the end of the quarter now, Greg. Fisher walking in there. And that it is. We've reached the end of the first quarter. No score in our ball game from Fayetteville or Razorback Stadium. We'll be back with second quarter action in just a moment. Jack Crow not having the year that he certainly had hoped or even expected, even with the losses and the changing in the head coaching uh, position. But it all started back when the Razorbacks defeated Tulsa 28 to three. And then the next week were beaten by Ole Miss. Now at the time, Ole Miss was one of those middle to the bottom half of the SEC teams. And as it's turned out, of course, they're battling for the championship. But the Razorbacks had a chance to win that game in, uh, in Little Rock, but time expired before they could get the ball into the end zone on the last play of the game. They got as far as the one, and the clock ran out. And since then, it's been downhill. Well, the Aggie fans got their sway going up here in the Razorback Stadium. Second down. Jackson with a hole. First down and up to the 49-yard line. E.D. Jackson. Kevin Smith finally making the tackle on Jackson. Larry Horton punching it down. Watch William Thomas come from the top of the screen. He overruns the play. There he is, number 11. He was coming on the blitz. He gets upfield. Jackson was able to get underneath him, didn't have to use a blocker on Thomas. That's what opened the hole up to turn it upfield. So that angle right there, that blocker was able to turn up, give you an extra blocker downfield when Thomas on his blitz got too deep upfield. First down at midfield. Yardage even, the scoreboard is two. Nothing, nothing. That's a pass incomplete. Second down, Edie Jackson has been busier in this game and he has been in any single game, certainly up to this point. He came into the game carrying the ball more than anyone else. 109 carries, but uh, Aaron Jackson was just three behind him. One thing about that play, if Ruby had gotten the ball out to Jackson, he was wide open. If he just put a little air underneath the ball, lobbed it, Jackson would have caught it, but probably went about 15 yards downfield. This is E.D. again, but they can't hold out the defense. Corners came up quickly as soon as they saw the run. They did not allow the blocks to take him down. Chris Crooms and Black were the two that got credit for the tackle, but really it was the guys before that that made that play not happen. Tried to run a toss, power sweep, same turn. Hey, the fullback leading the play. Chris Kirby's leading the play, trying to get a block out there. But you see all the white jerseys. Great job of containment outside there by defensive back. Number, number seven, I think, was in there making that play. There's Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, as Grovey has it tipped incomplete. It was intended for Caldwell. It would have been, uh, if caught and stopped, it would have been maybe a couple yards short of the first down, but it's now fourth, and the Razorbacks will have to give it up again as the Aggie defense is happy with that turn of events. Well, one thing they allowed to have happen was the field position was reversed with a big gainer. Now with any type of punt, the Aggies will be starting deep in their own territory. Garrett is deep to return it, and again, very high. He'll try it. But won't go anywhere as he's wrestled down right at the 15-yard line. We'll take a break and return 
No score in the second quarter. The Aggies and the Razorbacks. About what you would anticipate in a last game. Seniors, you know the Arkansas seniors are going to play hard. A team that really is fighting for just one game for the season. Now the emotional aspect has worn off. They've got to play with their ability and with their heart. The Aggies now have to kind of take charge of this game and do the things that they came into this game with their game plan and wanted to accomplish. Ball is at the 16, first down. Darren Lewis hit hard as he reaches the 20 and his turn back there. Lewis, Darren Lewis with the uh, pickup. Tyrone Chapman was the man who made the first hit. Let's take a look at it. Uh, Lewis just the sweep toss. He turns up field. Now he gets knocked backwards. If he'd lowered himself a little bit and gone forward, he could have picked up another couple yards. It is second and six. Richardson sees the hole, gets the first down across to the 30-yard line, or 29 to be exact. Ben Floor put him down. Let's go down to Bill Land, who's been uh, sizing up attitudes on the sideline. You never know that it's a scoreless ball game if you go sideline to sideline. Being on the Arkansas side, everybody's upbeat. A tie score, even 0-0, is a positive the way the Razorbacks have been going. On the other side, you get the idea that AM is really down, expecting to win and win big here today. And certainly Arkansas is very up right now, guys. Thanks a lot, Bill. Of course, Bill, with the advantage of being able to go sideline to sideline, also is able to keep himself warm down on the field. Move it around a little bit. Here's Lewis, and he is banged down at the 30. Pick up of perhaps two, second down. Well, that's Lewis's eighth, the eighth carry in this ball game for about 43 yards. And so far, the Razor Blacks have done a good job of uh, containing Lewis. Well, Lewis has 25 career 100-yard games. The record of the Southwest Conference is 28, Eric Dickerson. So he's got enough games when you count the uh, remaining games in the season, three plus a bowl game. First down past midfield of the 43-yard line. Michael James with the tackle of Harrison, Tony Harrison, the speedy freshman from Houston Forest Brook. This guy, if he gets open like this, it can really burn 4.4 in the 40. Well, it's a bootleg roll up back, and they're working behind the underneath zone and under, underneath the top of the zone. You can see work to the inside. Richard did a good job of laying that ball over the top of those linebackers in front of the defensive secondary. That may loosen up a little bit for the running game. Darren Lewis, let's see how loose it is. There's a flag thrown as Lewis gets across 40 to about the 38, but there was a flag. At Curtis Banks with the tackle. Uh, you can almost bet that's a holding call when that was thrown in there. And it is. And of course, that will stop the running game, a holding call. Chad Rowland talking it over with Mick Thomas and finding out exactly how far it gets pushed back. Sure, they'll take it. I would think they'll take the penalty. He made a pretty yeah, good run on it. Picked sure up did. about six, six yards on the play. Still be first down. But they'll move it back past midfield to the 45-yard line, and they'll have to go to the other 35-yard line to pick up a first down. So it's first and 20, R.C. Slocum. That puts them in a situation they don't like to be in because uh, Bucky Richardson is not the passing quarterback. And any running team really hates to see anything more than 10 yards needed to get a first down. Well, he's had good success, though, against his own coverage. Now, this time... Patterson is up to the 50 and hit right away by James. Pick up of about five. It'll be second and 15. Well, that's a good that's a good call. Not try to get it all back on one pop. Try to pick up a little bit on first down. Pick up a little bit on second down. Then you just need a short gainer to maybe to pick it up on third down. James, of course, is a junior. He'll be back next year. Banks, the other corner of the junior. Sean, the other corner, is a freshman. They're playing a lot of young folks out there defensively, the Razorbacks. Oliver's wide to the top of the screen. In motion is Derek Ware. 
And here looks like a quarterback option, the halfback option, and it is up and complete to Oliver from Lois. The lefty gets the first down. Michael James with the cat or the tackle, rather. Well, Greg, that was a great play by Gary Oliver. He was going deep. This is designed to go for a touchdown. It's going to be a toss sweep to Lewis. He's going to come out and look downfield. Now, they're going to go for the touchdown. Oliver realizes that it's not there. He stops. He comes back to the football. That's what made this play. And Lewis, good adjustment. You see Oliver coming back to the ball, and they did pick up that first down. Well, Lewis has thrown before, and, and he does it again. The, the thing I think the backs, uh, the defensive people have to remember is that he's left-handed. So that was not a tough throw for him. Richardson on the keep inside the 15-yard line. First down. James again making the stop from his cornerback position. I'll tell you what he's done, Lewis. Talk about him passing. Going into that pass, he'd completed five out of ten for 151 yards and four touchdowns. We've got a timeout. We'll take a timeout. No score, but the Aggies are threatening in the second quarter. A record-setting year at Mazda, the Miata, <laughs> the new Navajo. Thousands of new owners feeling just right. It's your turn now. You can save with factory-to-dealer incentives. Save with special options packages. Save up to twenty-five seventy-five. Mazda, there's no stopping us now. With deals like these, there's no stopping you. At your Dallas-Fort Worth Metro Mazda dealer now. The crowd is ready. And the Aggies are ready to perhaps punch one in. They're on their the 14-yard line in uh, Arkansas territory. And here the conference is basically, let's get it straight. Let's make sure we get it in. Well, they've got a good drive going on. This is what the Aggies really would like to do. Roll the ball. See the stats there, they've rushed for 75 yards. Started mixing the passing game, and when you have a little bit of success with that passing game, that will certainly open up the line. There'll be Razorbacks will be thinking about rushing. Ends will be getting upfield a little bit. That'll open up for Wilson and Lewis to run inside a little bit more. Three wide outs, one running back. That's Wilson. He's got the carry. And he gets to the 10-yard line. A pickup of five. Second and five. Chad Rowland, the first to make the hit. The Sherman, Texas, three-year letterman senior. Uh, that Wilson is really an underrated back. You don't hear an awful lot said about him. Of course, you can see the plays being signaled in on the sideline. That's Lance Pavlis getting the plays from the offensive coaches. Coaches upstairs in their press box. That's Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator. That Jim Helm is running back coach and Robert Ford up receiver coach up there talking about the coverages and the adjustments and he makes a decision back to the I formation and they have to call another timeout 25 second clock ran down it took too long to get that play in and a little slow getting in and out of the huddle and Richardson wisely used this timeout actually the last one was not called by a and that was Arkansas so that was only the first one called by a and well, this was a good timeout by the Aggies. Oh, they had second down, and you know, at six, they got the ball on the 10 yard line. They certainly didn't want to blow a five yard penalty. Bob Toledo, of course, telling Bucky what they anticipated. Talk about the defense that you prepared against when you get inside the defense. You're thinking once you get inside that 20 yard line, about the 15 yard line, everything will change, and they'll give you different looks and different defensive adjustments. Now, Bucky would walk over there and told him what he saw, whether that was exactly what they practiced against or whether they made a change. Special Order Sports is pleased to team up with the Houston Rockets to bring you NBA basketball this season. The SOS schedule includes games with the Celtics, Suns, Trailblazers, Lakers, Sonics, Knicks, Jazz, and Spurs. All you've got to do is pick up the phone and order as many games as you see in those particular areas. Richardson keeps it to the five for first down. He lays it off, but was that forward? Touchdown, touchdown. They're going to give it a touchdown, but that looked pretty close by first look that he pitched it forward, Ed. We'll, we'll see on this one. They're going to talk it over. They've got touchdown up, I think. No, they call it. it is a touchdown. Official never made a call, Greg. I, I was watching right away. I thought it was forward. One official looked at the 
the other official. The other official didn't call it. So whether it was forward or not, it's going to be a touchdown for the Aggies. Great job by Bucky Richardson running the option. Lewis the gets credit scrimmage. for it. Very late with the pitch. Lewis, I'm sure, was yelling at him. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Now you're going to see the pitch. Oh, that looked forward to me. <laughs> Here's the extra point. Camera angle. Okay. <laughs> it's good. And we got time out with some time left on the clock. The clock not operating, but we're in the second quarter, and the Aggies lead Arkansas 7 to nothing. Getting to know you. Miss, uh, miss, excuse me. Yeah? How'd you get to know Geo Metro? Driving home to see my folks. Oh, impressed? Well, they're in the next time zone, and I made it there and back on a tank of gas. Yeah, I'm impressed. Well, yep, 9 out of 10 Metro owners do sight high. We're in the second quarter. The Aggies have scored uh, the touchdown. Uh, well, let's say it officially was not a forward lateral. Officially. Unofficially, of course. Well, of course, you can see that when he, <laughs> when uh, Richardson lateraled the ball, he was on the about the six-yard line. Watch now, watch where the ball is caught. <laughs> Lewis catches it on the four-yard line. Now that has to be forward, Greg. I, <laughs> I think so. I... Watch again. Here's another shot of there. There's the pitch. There it is, forward, and he takes it in the end zone. Well, you know that's just another one of those things when you're Arkansas, things aren't going right. That happens too. And that doesn't happen. Good example. There would have been a big running room there. Jesse Cox knocking James out, but he just couldn't get that corner turned. And it'll be Arkansas putting the ball in play uh, about the 27 yard line. Yeah, Darren, you got away with one there, babe. And if you're an Arkansas fan and you're unhappy with the call, just blame either the line judge or the side judge. That's their responsibility. Not the referee, not the umpire, the line judge or the side judge on that side was their responsibility. And Darren says they owed us a couple this year. We had some bad calls. First down. Take to Aaron Jackson. Groby's got some room. What footwork by Groby! Tried to take advantage of a block, but coming through to knock him off his pins was Derek Frazier. That is the Quinn Groby that through his four-year career has been the top quarterback in the SWC. It comes out looking for the bootleg pass to the tight end. It dropped off to cover the tight end. Now watch the fake here. Uh oh Where are you at? Marcus Buckley down the field. Marcus Buckley just kind of sauntered from side to side. That's a sophomore getting a pretty good indoctrination in the fact that Groovy has got some pretty good moves. Right there, he waves at him. Bye-bye. Two lead blockers in front. Groovy turns the corner. And he's got eight yards as he runs out of bounds in front of Kevin Smith. That's the threat that you have when you got a running quarterback. As he got out there, he told the receivers, go on downfield, knowing that the defensive backs had to go with him. Then he turned on, watch him use his hand here to wave the, wave the receiver downfield to go on down to you. Watch it. See right there pointing, saying, go deep, go on deep. He knew the defensive secondary people had to go with him and stay with him. Felt like he had enough speed to get outside and pick up the yardage and then stepped out of bounds. Got away from Oklahoma, and of course he runs a type of offense that uh, under Barry Switzer they were running in Oklahoma under Barry. Yeah, you certainly can see why he is the leading rusher in Arkansas's quarterback's history. Aaron Jackson for the first down to the 30, 25 yard line. Bill Land is down on the sideline, so let's check in with Bill. About the touchdown run, and he said, Hey, that was the play. I was supposed to get the ball. And uh, when I told him that looks like it's a forward lateral, they said, We'll take it anyway. And then Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator, came over and said, You keep playing like that, I may make you into a quarterback. <laughs> well, you keep getting away with forward laterals, I guess. First down on the 25. Well, the old saying, Greg, the, the, the winners say deal and the, I mean, the losers say deal and the winners tell jokes, but right now the 
Razorbacks have reacted to that, uh, saying, hey, we're not going to get taken out of this game by an official's call. Let's come back. Chris Kirby with that short carry. The Aggie band getting set for halftime. <laughs> Aggies know they're in a fight right now. Second down and eight. Brand in motion. Bryant, rather. And they get to Aaron Jackson. And Aaron gets inside the 15 to the 12 yard line. Well, if anything, that touchdown may have fired these Razorbacks up. Uh oh, there's a penalty down. Penalty downfield. And this penalty, Greg, just very well might be against the Razorback for something really late down there. There's the inside play. Now, downfield down here, you can see the receiver, number nine, Tracy Cobwell, a freshman, maybe making a freshman mistake and if such it could cost him 15 yards and wind up at first and 25. Dead ball foul. Dead ball foul. That will be the case. It'll be first down but first and a bunch. Five. They had the first down made and it was after the play was over. Tracy Codwell freshman that's a freshman mistake trying just too hard and boy does that hurt your football team though first and 25 are hard to overcome. We're in the second quarter. The clocks are not working on the field, so we can't give you exact time, but it is 7 to nothing in favor of Texas A&M, and now the timeout will be called by Arkansas as they're going to talk things over on this first down play. Well, I think the thing that happened right here, Jack Crow realized maybe his offensive, uh, he acts as his own offensive coordinator. They may not be too happy to realize the first to 25. He wanted to settle his football team down. Of course, they, the Hogs are happy, excited about what's going on right now. But the coaching staff, I think he wanted to get his team settled down and say, now, look, we're moving the football. Even though we made a dumb mistake, let's keep our poise. We can still pick this up and get points on the board out of this drive. Now, that's extremely important. That was a good timeout for Arkansas. Don't want to compound one mistake by making another big mistake. He's just trying to get everybody settled down back on the same page. Your, your emotional stability of this team is, is, you know, is very fragile, and things can upset, and players start griping and hollering at each other. Why I knew that happened was one of the off offensive linemen for Arkansas was really screaming at the receiver that made that play. Well, of the, of the last two losses that Arkansas, no, no, that's not the Bush. <laughs> the, uh, the the last two losses Arkansas have, have had have been very disappointing. Rice won here in the state of Arkansas, which really hurt them. And then Baylor just tore them apart, 34 to three. So they're really trying to bounce back. About uh, 6:42 to go in the second quarter, Greg. Nowhere to go on the option, and Groby just falls down 95 97 11 all in there Albert Jones William Thomas Mark Wheeler second down and well, they try to run an option play into the short side you can see come right down the line keep the ball but a really good penetration in there by the, by the Aggie defensive folks Mark Wheeler got across the line controlled the gap and that wasn't a bad call by Arkansas settles them get back down into your own routine that you've been doing Aaron Jackson moves. Roby is sacked. Albert Jones, one of those that got to him, but also getting through was 96 John Miller, who maybe put the hand on him first. Now they they want to get points out of this. They certainly don't want to go backwards. Now this is going to be a big third down key play for them. Otherwise, they're, they're too far out now for field goal, probably. You see the penetration. Of course, the defensive lineman pretty well knew, though, in second 25, he's going to have to throw the ball downfield. They just laid their ears back. Albert Jones, of course, from Willow Ridge High School in Missouri City. Aggies with the advantage on the scoreboard and statistically. Grovey, Caldwell, short of the first down, but he's in an easy field goal range now as he's down to about the 13-yard line. Larry Horton with the man making the tackle. Great job by Gray. Knew where he's going to go all the way. Went right back. Look for Codwell all the way. And of course, I'm sure Codwell really wanted to catch this pass to make up for the 15 yard penalty. But it's going to give him the opportunity to get three points out of it. Or Todd Wright, under these conditions, has been perfect all year. He has not missed a field goal under 40 yards this season. And this will be a 30 yard attempt straight on. He 
It is straight on on the net behind the goalpost. And so with about six minutes to play in the first half, Arkansas is on the scoreboard. The Aggies lead it seven to three. And the Arkansas Razorbacks needed that after the Aggies scored for them to come back and put points on the board was extremely important. From Arkansas standpoint they want to hang in here as long as they can in the football game. They'd like to think that maybe we can win it at the end. The Aggies on the other hand as long as they let them hang in here they make it a tough football game for themselves. Well, the Arkansas Razorbacks have not scored a touchdown since the Houston game and yet that's a game you want to or well they've had one touchdown since the Houston game one touchdown against Rice. So it's been several weeks before they're all there since their offense has been able to take it all the way but they're in this game. Well, they've only scored 14 points I think the last two games at 11 against Rice including one touchdown and they had three against Baylor one field goal late in the second quarter Tennessee 10. A&M 7, Arkansas 3. We're in the second quarter. A game coming to you on Special Order Sports. I think they just said, Greg, it was under five minutes to go here in the second uh, second quarter. It's a real difficult to kind of keep you folks informed. We're having a hard time keeping informed when there's no clock working. Well, I know that when the band is marching around out on the middle of the field, it'll be halftime. <laughs> well, the Aggies are lined up underneath there, underneath the goalpost down at uh, the left side of the field already. <laughs> okay. Glenn Ray Hines will kick it off. Bit of an opening here, out of bounds at the. Uh, 40-yard line for Texas A&M, Randy Simmons. Simmons with his return. Glenn Ray Hines with the tackle. Randy Simmons is a fine junior football player. Big 6'2", strength to break the holes up through there. Good block, and it makes a little move here to get to the outside. Shows you the speed there. Gets hit pretty good and lay him out pretty good over in that Arkansas sideline. I think he's going to step in Darren Lewis' place next year, and they may not miss a beat with Randy Simmons. Seven to three in the second quarter. Richardson. And that's Lewis who gets short yardage about three yards. You know, earlier, uh, Bill Land, uh, Bill Land, in fact, is standing by on the field, so let's go down to Bill. Thanks, Greg. Hey, the reason the band's here is they're clueless about the time like the rest of us, and they're not about to miss their performance, so they came down early, and of course, we'll have the band for you at halftime here, as well as a nice interview with Kermit Davis, the new Aggie basketball coach, as we look forward to college hoops coming up. Kermit's uh, got a victory over New Zealand, I think it was, uh, last night in a exhibition game. His first outing as the head coach, second down. Lewis gets nothing, maybe a yard. That's all. Ty Mason with the tackle. Could very well be the first real key play of the first half of this football game, Greg. Third down for the Aggies. Should they not convert this third down situation, then you know Arkansas will hang in there probably to almost into halftime. On the other hand, the Aggies, they pick it up, they can continue to march in and put some points on the board for halftime. Well, that was last year, and that brings up a point a little later on. We're going to check in with Bill Land. He has an interesting story about the souvenir situation here in between leagues that Arkansas is uh, involved with. The catch by Oliver, he bobbled it but held on to it. That's a first down at about the 42-yard line. Big play for the Aggies. Again, as I said before that play, this was an extremely key play to maybe the, how this first half will wind up. Great drop back pass, working against his own cover. You see the receiver, you see uh, Ransom settling down underneath. And again, you can see Oliver working in the between the linebackers in the secondary and seams of the zone. Good job by Richardson having poise and taking his time to complete that. First down at the 43. Wilson. Wilson to about the 30. Four yard line, short by a couple of yards. Scott Long with the tackle. Long recovering from knee surgery. Benton, Arkansas, making the tackle. Had pretty good success and to give the ball to Wilson on first down. Aggie linebackers, I mean the Arkansas linebackers, obviously looking for Lewis to carry. You can see the flow. Wilson does a great job of cutting back behind the block. You saw Mason try to flow quickly to where the area that 
Lewis was headed to. Robert is a junior. There was a story about him uh, hoping that they come up with that new re regulation allowing you to declare professional and then come back if you don't get signed. The ball is up to the 20-yard line, 21-yard line. It's a first down. Darwin, Ireland with the tackle. They're talking about a, a deal which would give guys like Wilson a chance to test the waters, and then if they don't get signed or draft high enough, uh, they can come back to college. He'd like for him to do that. Well, he did a great job that time of cut behind the block of Keith Alex. Looked like the play was going to his left. Alex kind of moved over to his left like he was going to clean out the hole. Wilson recognized that there's no one, no linebacker holding back there. The Razorback linebackers flowing just a tad too fast right now to the hole. At the 21-yard line, it's first down and a whistle. Movement in the Aggie offensive line. Possibly Ellisor, number 51. They saw. I tell you what, if anyone's got an excuse to move, it's probably John Ellisor. He's moved all over the line. They've, they've had him playing everywhere. He's been center. He's been a guard. He's been left guard, right guard. Take a look at him there. Take a look at his. Watch his feet over there. Watch him move his feet and change the stand right there. See a little bit of movement. That's all it takes for that umpire. See the defensive player pointed out. The umpire <laughs> throws a flag. Five-yard penalty. Sophomore. From Kingwood, six foot three, two hundred and seventy pounder. He was a defensive nose guard last year. They changed him to offense just this year. Yet another change. Two, and, two minutes eleven seconds is our time update left in the first half. Richardson to the corner. It is Oliver for completion, short of the first down. A pickup of about uh, fourteen. It's up to the eleven yard line. Michael James runs him out. Well, Oliver getting a lot of single coverage out there because they're concentrating on trying to stop the running game. See him roll out to his left. Oliver will do the sideline pattern right underneath of Curtis Banks, the defensive back. Of course, well, it wasn't Banks. It was Michael James. It gave him a lot of, a lot of ground, respecting uh, Oliver's speed. And our cameraman respect the good looks of the Razorback cheerleaders. First down to Lewis inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal. And of course, the clock stops while they change, move the chains. I watch Wilson lead to play. Lewis that time did a good job again of cutting back, trying to cut behind the flow of those linebackers. Wilson is the only running back. He's in blocking. Incomplete pass to Oliver, but he may have been tackled early. Nope, no flag. That was close. Del Chun was on defense. Looked like he may have gotten arms around him before the ball got there. Well, the Aggie bench almost came up. Let's see if this evens, <laughs> evens up the call. Looks to right, comes back to the left. There's the pass. Well, oh, I think you can tackle him before they catch the football, can't you? Obviously, they just did. Del Chun, <laughs> freshman. Again, a lot of youngsters out there playing for the Razorbacks. 104 remaining. The time update. Second and goal. Looking like blitzing. They don't come. Now they're coming from the outside. The pass is complete, but a loss on the play. Knocking out of bounds, Garrett. They're back to the nine-yard line. Michael James with the tackle. Razorbacks doing a good job that time coming up in a late blitz. A late blitz where they put linebackers right up in the gap between the center and the guard. He really has to throw this to get rid of it. There was a lot of pressure on him. Threw it a long way just to lose a yard or two. Third and goal. Oliver goes left. Good coverage by James. They're working James from sideline to sideline. Now he's lining up wherever Oliver goes. Garrett is left. Blitz again. Overthrown into the end zone corner, but Garrett couldn't get there, and it's fourth down. And these Razorback fans are happy with their defense. Did a good job of calling blitzes the last two downs down there, anticipating the Aggies. Now, this is one. Of the, this is a situation where that clock hurt the Aggies a little bit. Looking up, not quite sure what's going on, even though maybe you think just that mental part of not being able to know exactly how much time left hurt them on that drive. Talbot will try to give the Aggies back a seven-point lead with a field goal. This will be coming from the 18, 28-yard attempt. It is good. And so with 
seconds left in the first half. It's the Aggies 10, <laughs> Arkansas 3. Actually, we have less than a minute. We Can you know repeat that, that uh, time again? Let's hear that again. I haven't heard that time before. <laughs> <laughs> Cleve Weathers. Almost. <laughs> Manitoulis will kick the ball off from the 35, and Arkansas will see what they can do in the 49 seconds that remain. Yeah, yeah. Aggies have scored now the last two times they've had their hands on the football. Pat Burris will be back. No return from Burris. Up to the 25-yard line for Arkansas is Darwin Ireland, the up man, and so it will be put in play at that point. Clock stops while the teams change positions on the field. Medlock was the first man to make contact. Quinn Grovey now will come out and see what he can do. Well, I would think Arkansas will probably play this just a little bit conservative. Run an option or... Maybe with Grovey carrying the ball, something of that nature. They've got to be well satisfied. They would uh, get the ball to start the second half, and that sometimes goes into the coaches' minds of thinking that we'll have the ball to start the second half. Let's don't do anything to maybe allow the Aggies to get any more points on the board right here when you got seven, uh, you know, you got 75 yards to go for a score. Russell and Chapman are wide. He's going to look wide, flushing out of the pocket, incomplete. Second down and ten. That's a flag, late flag. I'm not too sure what the flag's for. They're conversing. It looked like with uh, an interesting call. Looked like he was talking things over with William Thomas. Oh, the receiver, the receiver had stepped out of bounds and then came back in and touched the football, which is loss of down five yard. Uh, yeah, five yard. Uh, I don't think it's anything, just a loss of down. That's a, uh, if it's not, it, 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 if, if he called that correctly, it doesn't sound like it's a very logical penalty to me. It seems to me just a simple incomplete pass. Yeah, uh, well, you know, they, I mean, he's, an, he's just not eligible to catch it anymore once he's been out of bounds. That's why I was surprised at the lateness of the, of the flag coming in once the pass was incomplete. Uh, second, well, no, it, they got second down. They, they have second down. They didn't do anything. It was just an incomplete pass. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's going to be well. third down. Very This very well could be the last play. Uh, Last play of the first half. I think Jack Crow wants him just to stay in the huddle. There's 17 seconds. That clock is operating, the play clock. Uh, Arkansas, half their coaching staff and players are headed through the locker room, so okay. time. Norm normally, you don't run the play clock when there's less than uh, the time left, but nobody knew that, so it was running. And it is halftime. That much we know for sure. We also know at halftime for sure Texas A&M leads Arkansas by a score of 10 to 3. We'll be back with halftime activities on Special Order Sports in a moment. About the opening half. Well, it's about what we expected. You know, we're playing the two-time defending champ. A&M has not won here since 1967. We. Uh, we knew what we were in for. We knew it'd be a tough, hard-fought contest. I think so far uh, it's been just what we said it'd be. We've got a tough second half ahead of us. I think our players uh, have made good adjustments at halftime, and I think we'll play well in this half. What about the clock situation? Has that been distracting for your staff as well as your ball club? Uh, that is a distraction, but I think it is for both teams. It's just one of those things. They've had some problems with the clock, and the, the officials are doing a good job of keeping us surprised of what the time is on the clock, so uh, we're adjusting to that, too. All right, Coach, good luck. Thanks for your time. Thank you. R.C. Slocum with us at the half, and we'll be back in just a moment with second half action. The Aggies on top, 10-3. Off going into the end zone, and Darren Lewis picks up about eight yards where it'll be second down and two. Let's take a look at the first half statistical story. First downs AM dominating there, and really in total yardage and just about everything. 
Arkansas having 140 yards total mostly rushing which is something they have had trouble with much of the year but they trail on the scoreboard 10 to 3. Second down and two. This is just the second play of the second half. Texas A&M up to the 28. And Darren Lewis has the first down across the 30. Let's take a look at the one touchdown that the Aggies were able to score, and it was somewhat uh, suspicious at Biles. Well, just an old-fashioned option play where Richardson comes down the line of scrimmage, and as he's about to get tackled down there about the six-yard line, he makes a lateral to the four-yard line to <laughs> Darren Lewis, who uh, takes it in the touchdown of the first half. Each team had a field goal. We still have no clock, which is one of the reasons why we joined you with the first play. It was sort of hard to figure out exactly how much time was left in halftime. But we missed nothing. The ball brought out to the 20, and this is a first down play. Darren Lewis stacked up behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of one. Darwin Ireland, the Pine Bluff, Arkansas freshman, making the stop. He's the number four tackler on the club. I'll tell you one thing, that Ireland's going to be a fine linebacker. Freshman, he's played well. He reads things, comes up in the hole. Made that play across the line of scrimmage. About a yard loss on that play for the Aggies. It's the first negative yardage for Lewis. Uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Darwin, Ireland. He is a redshirt freshman, so he has used his, his free year, and he'll be playing the next three. Second down, 11. Richardson chased out into the corner. Flips one to Oliver for the first down. At the 43-yard line, he picked up about 12. Well, well Gary Oliver is really playing an outstanding football game. Greg Oliver that time came down, was working to the inside. It's play action fake. They really wanted to hit him in the, in the zone down the inside. Now, when Richardson scrambles to the outside, he makes a move and works back to the outside. You can see him working to the screener back to the outside. What an adjustment Oliver has made on two plays. A touchdown. Uh, the, the uh, halfback pass from Lewis and that one. 21 receptions for the year, five of them today. First down. Option again. Richardson has a hole. First down to the 40. 20. And down to the 14 yard line. Curtis Banks finally running him down. Bucky Richardson, who rushed for 180 yards in the Aggies last game, gets a big hunk here. Down the line option, same play they scored the touchdown on, only this time Richardson keeps the ball, doesn't decide to make the lateral at the end of the play. Good lead block down there by the receiver. Again, Gary Oliver, big factor in the play. Richardson picks up 46 yards on that play. First down at the 13-yard line. Wilson, the pads hit as he gets to the 10, and that is all. Ty Mason. Mason's had a big game. He's been the number two tackler on this Arkansas team this year. He is, at least unofficially, the leading tackler that we've had in this game. Wilson, the carry there. Well, there really was good popping down in there. Good, Mason, good shot of Mason. Again, he's a junior. He'll be back. Most of the defensive players will be back on this Arkansas football team. Robert Wilson's numbers, that's seven a carry, and that's uh, even better than his normally high 5.5. Darren Lewis, nothing at the midsection as he stopped right at the line of scrimmage. And the Aggies, the last time they got in this position, really had trouble getting it into the end zone, Greg. Razorbacks changing their defense, going more with the gambling, blitzing, bringing those linebackers up, bringing them in the hole. And R.C. Slocum right now, I'm sure, is just exactly what he's asking the coach over there. What are they doing? What adjustment are they making down that they're stopping our running game? They have to get to the three-yard line for a first down. They're at the 10 now. This is third down. Clock's down to seven seconds. And maybe you have to use a timeout. Well, he actually would have had enough time, but he apparently didn't like the look the defense was giving him, didn't have time to audible off. We'll take a break with a and leading at 10-3. Aggies lead Arkansas 10-3. Greg Lucas here along with Ed Biles and Bill Land. We have the Aggies threatening, but they have to burn a timeout here to make sure they get into the end zone. They've had a couple of uh, scoring opportunities 
early. One did result in a touchdown. The other one they had to settle for a field goal. Well, they've had the ball for four minutes of this quarter. There's 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Very interesting. The last two times the Aggies have had the ball, they've driven down into this territory. Bob Toledo, of course, a good shot of the offensive coordinator over there talking to Bucky Richardson, and they're trying to find out, discuss the different adjustments that the Razorbacks are making in this area. And every team does a lot of changing, and week to week you change depending on what you anticipate the opponent's doing. And right now, what the Razorbacks have done, bringing those linebackers and blitzing, is causing the Aggies some problems. On the other hand, the Aggies say, well, we, if we come out of here with points, that would put us at least more than one touchdown ahead. Shane Garrett is wide to the top of the screen. Richardson finds a hole off left guard, but he stopped at the five. He'll be short of the first down. It'll be fourth down. Uh, I, would feel, I would feel for sure they'll go for the, the field goal uh, in this situation, Greg, with it being a 10-3 to three game. Right? Down the line option. Sees daylight. Comes right up through there. Makes a little move. Tries to get up over the top, but he can't quite get down to the yardage. And he had to get down to the three-yard line, and here comes the field goal unit on. They're two yards, almost three yards short of the first down, so Talbot will try the field goal from the 13, a 23-yard attempt straight on. And it is straight on. AM and 13, Arkansas 3, somewhere in the third quarter. And we'll be back in just a moment. 10 minutes and 13 seconds left in the third quarter. Arkansas is trailing the Aggies 13 to 3. Well, I think the interesting thing again, Greg, is the Aggies have scored the last three times they've had possession. One touchdown, then had to settle for two field goals, but they are moving the, the ball. Let's see what Razorback offensively. They have to move the ball now. If they're falling behind by more than a touchdown. They can't sit there and try to be real conservative. They're in that in-between stage. Can't wait too long to try to show some of the things that maybe you want to do against the defense. Well, the Razorbacks defense has been a weakness all year. They've given up 54, 49, 49, 62. Those were in successive games. And then the 34 against Baylor in the last outing. Turning the ball was Number 16, Darwin Ireland. That's the second time he's gotten one of those short kicks. Otis Neely bringing him down. Here's the scoring drive. That's a good drive. They went 75 yards in nine plays, took 348 off the clock, but they still had to settle for that field goal. Getting back to the Arkansas defense, Greg, they've given up 311 points in nine games this year. That's the highest number of points ever allowed by the Razorbacks in the season, and they still got another game to go after this one. Here comes the blitz. Now it's dropping back. No blitz. Thomas was faking one. Groby has seven yards, and he's run out of bounds by Kevin Smith. Boy, he showed great. He showed his athletic ability. That counter play is designed to go back between the guard and tackle. He stepped this way. Now he should come back and go upfield between the guard and tackle. No daylight there. Look at Groby take it to the outside and pick that yardage up all on his own. That's just a counter play in case the linebackers are flowing real fast. They just try to bring it back between the offensive guard and tackle. No area there. He had speed enough to get to the outside. What an athlete. Second and four. E.D. Jackson for the first down. And a whole bunch more to the 48-yard line in AM territory. Drag Larry Horton with him. He made the tackle along with help from Quentin Coriat. Larry Horton is a tough defensive back. When you drag him with him, you know you're running with some power and authority. If we pull the backside, folks, the old Sean Forey's pull across there at the trap block. Looking to bounce off people, keep his legs driving. Now he's taking Horton for a ride. 15-yard pickup. Really made a good move on Anthony Williams. Try E.D. Jackson again. Look at the hole. Jackson has got the corner. And he's finally stopped at the 17-yard line by Chris Crooms. Wow, he had a hole. These kind of holes Arkansas has not had all year. 
Yeah, they really are. And right now, the Arkansas fans are sensing the possible upset. They know the fact that the Aggies have not beaten him very often. Look at the hole. He does a great job of cutting back. Once he gets through the hole, cuts back, takes it all the way to the other side. Now watch him lower his shoulder down here and just pick up what he can get. Picked up 17 yards, maybe more than that on that play, maybe 37 yards. First down at the 17. Aaron Jackson slips a tackle and gets upside to the 14-yard line as he slipped past William Thomas and Anthony Williams finally got him. Yeah, but that was a good play, though, by William Thomas. He came on and took up the blocker. The rest of the defensive secondary didn't react to their keys. They should have seen the blocking play, then the secondary has to come up and make that. Thomas really went down, played underneath that play. It was a good job by Thomas. One of the better times I've seen him take on blocker. Usually he'll avoid blockers and go around them. Lindy Lindsay comes in with a play. The two speedy receivers are out. That's Russell and Caldwell. Brant and Lindsay are in on a second down. To the 10-yard line. Chris Kirby, the freshman from Pine Bluff, brought down by Quentin Coriat. Well, Kirby's going to go right straight ahead. They haven't given the ball to Kirby much. This is the first time. This time, Kirby's been taking it out and keeping himself from running the option. This time, he hands it to Kirby. Shows he has some power. And he's compact. He's at 5'11", 215-pound back. He's hard to tackle. Well, big third down play now for the, for the Razorbacks offensively. Two tight ends in. One wide out, Chapman. The eye formation on third down and three. Fake pitch, roll out Grovey. He's got all the room he needs. First down, touchdown. Makes the pitch one way, comes out on the option. He's got the option to pass the ball to the tight end. You can see the tight end down there. But right now, Groover says, hey, I can get this in the end zone myself or close. Makes one little move, breaks it back to the outside. Shows you the great running ability that quarterback has. And the extra point adds up. It's 13 to 10 a and we got ourselves a football game. Here's a touchdown play. Bootleg with the option to either pass or run. Once he got outside the containment, he says, I don't want to take a chance on anybody else handling the ball. Think I can get it in there myself. Makes a little move to the inside. Knows he can get to the corner with his speed. Right now, the Aggies are in for a dogfight. I'll Here tell it is you. again from another angle. And of course, you can see, once he got the outside, he had the speed to get it into the end zone. Well, lest we forget, these two teams tangled last year, and it was a one-point decision with uh, it going 23-22 in favor of Arkansas. Right now, they're taking advantage of that bootleg. Marcus Buckley, the sophomore now, was in there playing that linebacker position. His job is to stay back there and contain. He's committing himself a little bit too fast to the other side, underestimating maybe Groby's speed a little bit. Has been beaten a couple times on that... Uh, Roll out option counter play. Stands are rocking now, Greg. Their football club, and you saw that uh, headline, I'll be a Razorback till I die. Those Razorback fans are proving it. They're making some noise. Well, and the players know this could really make up for the disappointment they've had this season. They knock off the Aggies again with the Aggies record. Would take some of the sting off of this two and seven season they're having. The kicker is number 30, Colby Golden. He's a freshman from Searcy, Arkansas. Simmons and McAfee are back. McAfee drops it, Simmons picks it up. To the 18-yard line. Greg Switzer and Pat Burris teaming up on the tackle. Switzer, son of the former Oklahoma coach who was in the crowd this afternoon. 
That was a good drive. We've had two excellent drives Both here. Both teams started the second half with good drives. The Razorbacks though was for a touchdown. I think this is a kind of a key series defensively for the Razorbacks. If they can stop the Aggies and get the ball back, this stadium will come apart. Watch number 25, but not now. Wilson is the set running back, the only running back. Wilson with the keep and the carry and the first down to the 32-yard line. Robert Wilson. Banks and floor on the tackle from their deep back spots. Heard as if the Aggies realize they're going to give the ball to Wilson on those first down plays. Straight man blocking. Now look at the little veer he makes, but also look at the job that Darren Lewis did making a block on the linebacker to allow Wilson to cut off of him. Most yeah. of the time we talk about the great blocking job that Wilson does. And that time Lewis did a good job blocking. It's only fair because Wilson is responsible for a lot of those Lewis yards. There's Lewis trying some here. Pretty much responsible for most of those by himself, but he only got a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Owen Kelly, the Wichita Falls, Texas sophomore nose guard, the first to make contact. Well, one of the ways to take a, a home crowd out of the game is if your offensive line running game can control the ball. And that's exactly what the Aggies would love to do right now. Have another long drive and put points on the board. Patterson in motion. Lewis banged down at the 37-yard line. A pickup of about three more. Curtis Banks with the stop. Dallas Carter, Jr. Well, they're making Lewis earn those yardage. Any yardage he's gotten today, he's had to work and earn. Just a power toss sweep. You see Lewis come out looking for the block of Wilson. Of course, there's a block in there by number 89. Ransom the tight end, but that's hard yardage to get it that way. Big third down play, third and four. They're in a passing formation. Oliver has been the clutch receiver. He's on the near side. Number 40 is the man. He's got the catch and the first down. Oliver. Thomas with the tackle. Well, so far, Oliver's been the most valuable player for the Aggies today. Lines up on the right side. He comes crossing pattern. They take the tight end, put him all the way across the left. Of course, Oliver came down underneath, knew exactly what he needed for the first down, picked that up. That was a big first down for the Aggies. Shaken up on the tackle. Looks like he may have jammed a wrist. Or a knuckle. Well, that's a good day. Six catches for 79 yards. Counters back to the right side, and he's got about eight yards. It'll be second down. Let's go down to the field with Bill Land. Thanks, Greg. You know, Egg, you had mentioned the situation and how it's a critical series for Arkansas defensively. I think likewise it's critical for the AM defensive side, who has been getting a pretty good session from R.C. Slocum. He has spent much of this last series right here talking to his defensive group. They're getting a chance to catch their breath and recollect their thoughts. And meanwhile, the offense is doing the job, taking some heat off them right now. That's a good point. R.C. had to be unhappy that his defense allowed Arkansas to move all the way down. And gets nothing. Really, maybe a yard, but he only needed two. Yeah, he needed about one and a half. That'll be close. Henry Ford with the tackle. Depends on the spot. Depends on the spot of the ball. Okay. This first down. Well, I, I think, think he moved he's it back short. now. He's short. like he moved it back. I don't think he made it. Third down. One. Mr. Blau. <laughs> well, he's up above the scoreboard on that crane. I don't care what the temperature's got to be a little chilly up there. They also told him that when they lifted him up there, make sure he didn't drink anything before the game. <laughs> Third down and one. Wilson, first down over the top. To the 45-yard line, it'll be first down for Texas A&M. And as Bill said down in the field, and one of the good things is happening right now, the Aggies' defense is over there getting a little bit of rest and kind of getting their heads back together. It's the lead play, giving it with the Wilson. He knew exactly what he needed. He knew if he went up over the top, he could pick up the yardage. He now has 10 carries for 65 yards. Jack Crow's team uh, wants to stop this Aggie surge. Richardson fakes once, wants to go deep. Patterson is the intended receiver. It's off his helmet, but the flag throw 
goes. That's going to be probably face guarding or contact before the pass got there. But in any event, it's going to come back. It'll still be a penalty, however, against Arkansas. Well, whatever it was, it prevented a touchdown. Though. They did a good job. They faked the slant in pass. And when he pumped the ball, then he turned and went deep. There's a little bit of pump there. Now he turned and went deep. He clearly had step, was behind him. And you can see right now, you can see, of course, James trying to play catch up. He says right now, hey, I can't let him catch this for a touchdown. If it comes back, it's just going to be a penalty. That's better than a touchdown play. Not only that, hits him on the, the helmet. And particularly with the college rule, which I don't particularly like, that it only is a 15-yard penalty. I've never really liked the rule, but it is a rule. So it's a 15-yard penalty, and Texas A&M will have the ball back at the 30. I like to rule, but I think they should add something to it. If it's intentional like that, Greg, then it becomes a spot foul. A lot of the unintentional ones and the little ticky-tack ones give them back the 15 yards. Doesn't that's a, ruin the game. That's, that's that, what I'd like to see them add to that good, rule. That's a good point because they do have the option on face masks and some other penalties. Wilson took a hard hit as he cut back inside Curtis Banks. Curtis isn't going to win that because Curtis is 192 and Wilson's about 250 when he's got all of his pads on. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He, he, lowered, he lowered his shoulder just and hit Banks. Watch the move he makes taking it to the outside. There's the hole inside. He shows some speed and ability to get to the outside. Now watch the end of the play where he goes into Banks right there. He delivered the blow. He said, my mama told me it's better to give than it is received. I went to church. It is a first down at the 18. Lewis. Actually, that time, the duo of Lewis and Wilson got tangled up a little bit. Lewis was pushed back into him, and no gain. Nick Thomas coming through to make the tackle. Well, I think that's one time where sometimes your mind works a little bit faster than your, than your feet. Lewis realized there wasn't anything outside. He wanted to come back to the inside, but he got those feet moving just a little bit too quick. Now, this is the area that the Aggies have struggled the last two times. Take a look now. He's going to see daylight back to the inside. Watch his feet. Watch his feet moving, trying to move his feet right there, and he just couldn't get the one left one out just a little bit too wide and couldn't play. Loss of three on the play, second and 13. Back on the 20. Wilson, he's got that back. He's in near the 10 yard line. Well, they, they solved that uh, defense that time. They said, let's run the old Adam uh, offense, run right straight out and watch the line block. Watch the offensive line block and get downfield, look at him get through the hole, bounce off that tackler, get on down, pick up five yards on his own. Listen, now, again, we're back to that key third down play, third down and uh, three, maybe two and a half for the Aggies. We're in the third quarter. It's 13 to 10 a &M. The official clock is being kept on the field scoreboard not operating has not most of the game Bucky Richardson to the five he's got the first down and the touchdown Bucky Richardson a 10 yard run 10 yard run on third down and the teams continue to trade scores here in the third quarter that's a big drive for the Yankees Greg with Arkansas getting fired up that kind of took the crowd right back out of it thinking that that drive, I think they went about 80 yards or whatever. They went for that touchdown. They controlled the clock. They used their running game. They did exactly what we thought they would want to do during the course of this game. Keep the ball on the ground. And, and Talbot's point is good. And so we have a 20 to 10 a and lead in the third quarter. We'll be back. Getting to know you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Can you tell me why you got to know Geo Storm? Well, you just point it and it goes. It's a straight ahead kind of car. A few sexy curves. A lot of attitude. Now, well, Storm is one of the fastest moving nameplates in America. What'd you pay for it? Promise you won't tell? Get to know Storm right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. The Aggies take the lead on this Bucky Richardson play. Faking the handoff and keeping it on a possible option. Ten yards. Made a little move down in there. Made James miss the tackle. Bucky took it into the end zone. Because that's the dimension he gives the football team, the ability to run that option play. And you can kind of see right now, Arkansas said, hey, we're not going to let Lewis beat us today. We're going to take him out of the game. 
And right now, Wilson and Richardson have become big factors. That's a great drive right there. 82 yards. He went 11 plays. They used five minutes and 47 seconds. And of course, Richardson on the option score of 10 yard run. Make it 20 to 10. There's that 153 left in this third quarter. There's what you need for Christmas a motorized hog hat. <laughs> Uh, by the way, minute 53 is what is remaining officially now as the kickoff is taken by Burris. Oops. Bounced off like a pinball, but he got up to about the 27-yard line where Arkansas will have it. Well, now let's see whether that talking that the Aggie defense received over there while that drive was going on, what effect it had. Now you see the offensive coaches over there. Mike Sherman over there talking to the offensive linemen saying here's what they did. Here's the adjustment they're making down in the 15. RC feel a little better about his football team right now. Well Grovey moved his team down the field with the only possession they have had in the second half. Giving a blitz look and dropping back. He's audible of course. Flag. And he's going to lose ground as he runs out of bounds. There was a flag thrown. <laughs> he well, he wound up and couldn't stop himself. Might be a little slippery over there. I don't think there was anything happened on the sideline from the Aggie standpoint. Just he kept running, couldn't slow down, stop. Offside. Aggies lined up offside. They were probably were in the neutral zone. Someone had their head up in there too far. Yeah, that was a break for Arkansas. Yes. One of the defensive linemen or linebackers took the lecture to heart. He wanted to get in and make a play and lined up offsides. This uh, turf, by the way, is brand new. They just put it in. Well, you get around those bench areas, though, Greg, and all the uh, water and Gatorade and all the stuff that the players drink. A lot of times, then a little bit left, they'll throw them around to the sideline. Between the 30s and 30s, sometimes out of bounds is still is very slippery. First and five. Grovey keeps on the option and is dumped as he gets up to about the 35, 36 yard line. It'll be a second and a maybe two. Derek Frazier making the hit. hit. Frazier, sophomore. Option play again. Fakeson comes up to the outside. Grovey, of course, if he sees daylight, he likes to keep it and run it himself. Good job by Frazier for a sophomore coming up there. He's a good hitter. Played for old Buster Gilbert there at Clements High School in Sugarland. Had a little trouble with his knee earlier in the season. Appeared to be all right now. Second down in a yard. Caldwell in motion. Aaron Jackson doesn't have it. In fact, he may have lost a half yard. It'll be third down. Albert Jones, the first to hit him. Big Al, 257-pound senior, playing his last game after three years of, well, now four years of lettering. He's been a consistent good player. Not flashy, but he has been a consistent good player for the Aggies. Doesn't get a lot of credit, but he lines up and plays down in and down out. Third down. Al's from Missouri City, Willow Ridge. Outside Houston. Grovey on the option, had nowhere to go, and give that one to William Thomas. He died it perfectly and made contact and that was a big play by Thomas yeah but also give Kevin Smith a great deal of credit because as he comes up with the option play watch the outside look at Kevin Smith he took the pitch man away there was nothing that Grovey could do with the football except eat it so to speak that was about as well that was a great way of playing the option Thomas took the quarterback Kevin Smith took the pitch man when you play it that way the option doesn't look so good that's going to be the end of the fourth uh, the third quarter I believe Greg We'll take your word for it. When the players move to the other end of the field, we have to assume that's why they're doing it. We will be back with the fourth quarter to play. Texas A&M will have the football after a punt. A&M 20, Arkansas 10. Most credit cards advance you cash, but then immediately take interest back and keep on taking it. But now you can get cash interest-free with your Discover card. Just pay your balance every month, and for a small transaction fee, we'll give you the cash interest-free. So take it from us. Instead of giving it to them. It pays to Discover. You can do it with true value. 
It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas with the realistic six and a half foot Douglas fir tree from Hudson Valley. Save a growing tree and the yearly expense. This flame retardant tree complete with stand is just $49.95. Then string along the GE 100 light miniature set with bonus 35 light set for only $9.99 at participating True Value hardware stores and home center. Special order sports. Aggie Texas A&M football on pay-per-view. Greg Lucas here along with Ed Biles and Bill Land. Hoping you're enjoying our telecast. It has been a good one. A&M leads it 20 to 10, and they're about to get the ball back. Peter Rather is set to punt. Remember, one of the weaknesses has been their punt coverage. This one is not one of his better punts, and it comes down to the 27-yard line. And there's a flag thrown, I think a wrestling match back in about the uh, two flags thrown. 64 and 45 were going at it back at about the 27-yard line. That's going to be a holding penalty against the Aggies, I'm sure, on about the 30-yard line, which will move. See the Aggie offense going out there backing up already. They knew that it was a, either a hold or clip against one of the return men, a clip. Coach Slocum will not be happy with the player doing this. Flipping. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Coming down the field. Oh, there it is right there. Look on the left-hand corner there. Number 64 got it. Good call in the back. Good call by the officials. Well, that was a break for A&M because now or for the uh, Arkansas Razorbacks as A&M pushed back to its own 15 yard line. First and 10. Yeah, the Razorbacks stopped on that la their, their last series and it's important that Arkansas does that here. Short gain on the first down play. Wilson. Perhaps a couple. Yeah, Wilson getting himself quite a workout this game. Tyrone Chapman, the freshman red shirt, 204 pounder, making the stop. That man Jack Crow has gotten to really learn his roster this year because he has had to go through a lot of players. Injuries and ineffectiveness has caused him to use a lot of different players. He'll really have a handle on who he's got coming back next year. Second down and seven. Richardson keeps it, cuts inside. Stopped at the 21-yard line. Pickup of maybe two. Chad Rowland making the tackle. It was kind of funny. Option play like that. Doesn't look like it's going to make much yardage, but they probably finally put it down. He may have picked up three or close to four. Oh, there's a beautiful sight up in the hills. Between here and Fort Smith, which is only about 60 miles, uh, you go through the Ozarks and you have to go through Fort Smith to... Uh, if we could straighten that road, road out, Greg, we could drive straight to New York. About right, I think. Third down and four. Clutch man again. Every time he has needed a big catch on third and long, it has been Gary Oliver, and you'd think that by now the Razorbacks would be playing him a little tighter in those situations. Well, he runs great routes, and he has good hands. You can see the blitz coming, so he knows immediately it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Oliver knows what he needs, goes down, sidelines, even gets two feet in. We only needed one. <laughs> That's my man for this game, Gary Oliver. He's having a great game, either here or Robert Wilson. Well, it's his senior year. He was a former walk-on. He's certainly made himself a key part of this football team. This is still going, and he gets about two. He was lucky to get that far. Ben Floyd, Ireland, James, all in on the tackle. 46,408, and this stadium seats about 51,000 or so. That's really a tribute to the Razorback fans again because most of them have to come from distance. Fayetteville is not a large city, and it is up in the northwest corner of the state. Well, it's now to drive that road we were talking about. And it's now turned into a night game because it is dark and the lights are on. <laughs> and the club has been having a tough year. When you have a good year, it's easy to fill them up. Richardson, option keep. 
to the 47 yard line and he's brought down by number 47 Tyrone Chapman first down Texas A&M let's go down to Bill Land on the sideline well things are really quieted down here on the Arkansas sideline after A&M's last score and then this drive you can really see the wind being let out of the sails of the Razorbacks and hard to believe but this Razorback team is a quarter away from being the first team ever to go seven straight losses I noticed something else that's happened down on the sideline. It must have gotten cold down there. Yeah, Bill put a coat on it. Yeah, I thought he was tough. <laughs> Give inside for about five yards to Wilson and uh, Mick Thomas with the tackle. Now we talk so much, Greg, about Lewis getting those 100 yard games. Right now, Richardson's 10 carries for 90 yards. And Wilson, I'm sure, is approaching that 100-yard mark. I think the last time he had about 89 yards. So we may have a quarterback and a fullback who go over the 100-yard mark this game rather than Lewis. Second down, seven. Give Arkansas defense credit for that. They took the main man out and made him beat you someplace else, somewhere else. Lewis. Stopped short of the first down and a good individual effort as he slipped through one man, Darwin Ireland, with the tackle. He's going to be stopped about a yard short on third down. One of the things that a defensive team says, who's your main man who makes the plays? We want to try to take him out of the game. If you do that and they still beat you with their other players, that just means they're probably a better talented football team than you are. Well, and here's the, here's the problem against a team like the Aggies when they need one yard. They got three different people that are all capable of getting it. Both running backs and Bucky Richardson. Third and one. Lewis slipped, and I don't know if he was able to fall forward far enough to get a first down. No, I don't think he did, but I wouldn't be a bit surprised that R.C. might take a look at this and decide that he might want to go for it. This is going to be fourth down and maybe about a yard. Well, they're talking to Garrett, so they're going to go for it. Well, they better get to play in, or they're going to take uh, have too much time, and they'll be forced to punt. He slips again. Watch him get the ball to slip. Right there, that foot come out from underneath him. He dove forward to get what they got. I don't they, think they're going to get this playoff unless they use a timeout. They had to burn one with five seconds left on the uh, the clock. We'll take a break as well. 20 to 10, A&M leads Arkansas. We're in the fourth quarter, and we'll be back. A record-setting year at Mazda, the Miata, the new Navajo. Thousands of new owners feeling just right. It's your turn now. You can save with factory-to-dealer incentives. Save with special options packages. Save up to $25.75. Mazda, there's no stopping us now. With deals like these, there's no stopping you. At your Dallas-Fort Worth Metro Mazda dealer now. Arkansas 10 in the fourth, somewhere in the fourth. Again, the clock has been out throughout the game, but we're we're early in the fourth. Let's just put it that way. Well, the, they punted on the first play of the, fir, uh, the fourth. Uh, Arkansas had to punt on the first play of the fourth uh, quarter. And, of course, now the Aggies have had the ball since the start of them, so they probably have only used up about, oh, three minutes so far in this fourth quarter. That's the one thing about this Aggie offense. They can really use some clock up on you and keep uh, keep it away from you. Texas with a big win today in the Southwest Conference to stay undefeated. Baylor squeezing by Rice by a point to uh, not allow the Owls to have a winning season, but keeping Baylor's hopes alive for postseason bowl action. It's fourth down and one. Lewis, I believe he got it, but boy, it's close. We may have to wait on this one. Depends on the spot. Yeah, Depends I, on the spot. You know, looking at one official, I don't know if he got it. Depends on the spot. Official from the Aggie sideline came in and marked the spot. It is midway between the 37 and 38. Ty Mason with the hit. That is where the marker is. Aggie say, I mean, the Arkansas. Oh, no, did not make, make it. it. If that is the spot, he didn't. 
see what they're going to do. They're going to bring the chains out. But he's going to be, I'd say, three or four inches short. Let us check officially. And he is more than three or four inches. That was a defensive stop for you. Fourth down play. And again, he's got a, he's got the body lean. I don't know whether that field is just a slight bit slippery or whether Darren's having a problem with his cleats, but his legs were way behind him with his body lean. That's about the third time he's run the ball where those legs looked like they were just not working the way he wanted them to. A great defensive stop for Arkansas, but can they take advantage of it now? They're on their own 39-yard line. Edie Jackson. E.D. for five to the 44. Well, the Razorbacks are leaving it all go this game. They are really, there's a defense over there talking over. They realize they're in this football game. Second down and five. E.D. Jackson tries to use a block and gets up across the 45, down to the 44. Gain of two, second down, third down. Here's the AM offense. Good point. <laughs> yeah, that one you can't change. You show them what to do. Third down. That's been a good play so far. We're going to run 33 dots. All right? We're going to tag it right here and then go up to this back, which John talked about last year. Now that's next time AM has the football. Right now it's third down and three. Could be quick if they pass behind Russell incomplete. He was open, but Grovey couldn't get it to him. I don't believe Russell has caught a pass in the ball game. Derek Frazier was there on defense, but actually he didn't really do anything. It was the pass being behind the intended receiver. It's fourth down. Well, fourth down. Coach Crow got a decision to make. And he made it. The crowd booing. They wanted him to go for it. But that was fourth and four in midfield. That's a little steep. In your own territory. Now, if they got any fake punt or anything designed, this would be the time to use it. But again, this is a tough gamble in your own territory. It's also Pete Rader who just joined the team. Oh, well, Horton is deep. He's going to let it go. And this could be killed in great position. They better stop it. And they do. And that was a, a super play by Arkansas. Number 89, Kirk Botkin, because he had to stay out of the end zone. Momentum takes him in. The ball goes with him. We'll be back in just a moment. As you can see, the house is completely renovated with the very best heating and cooling system. Must be a Linux. So we put in this new heat pump, and our bills are really down. Exactly. Must be a Linux. Like I was saying, I just bought a new heat pump. Uh huh. Got a great deal. Uh -huh. And they say my energy bills could really drop. Oh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. A Lennox must be a Lennox. Oh, yes. Must be a Lennox. Here is the punt from Raider. Well, Greg, I thought his foot hit the line right there. It oh. did. Official was screened. 64 had the official screened out. 89 got away with a break. Let's go down to Bill Land on the field. Thanks, Greg. Hey, I had to chuckle. When Crow decides to kick the ball, they're all yelling, no guts. Come on, coach. What do we got to lose? We haven't won a game all year in the league. As soon as the ball ends up where it does, great call, great call. Way to back them up. Now stop them and get the ball back. <laughs> That's the fun of coaching, Bill. <laughs> you get all that either way. You can't win. Nine minutes and 49 seconds left. Now what Arkansas would sure like to have would be a turnover. But the Aggies have been very careful with the football. They'll try to punch it out of the end zone here. The safe way is Bucky Richardson just straight ahead for a yard. Second down. That's the one thing he... The official called for a timeout down there for some reason. I think the official stopped the clock. 
some reason. How would we ever know? Well, I saw him look at the, <laughs> see the, you got the back judge has got to do the timing. Second. Now he's finally going to start it again. It was such a pile, I don't think he wanted the timer to stop the 25 second clock too soon, give him a chance to unpile. Second down nine. Defense looks at a bit in disarray. Now it's all set away. And a, well, it wasn't a, a clock violation. It was something on the line of scrimmage, Ed. I think the right tackle or someone moved over there. I think there was movement on the Aggies' offensive line. It'll be half the distance call. You notice the Razorbacks pulled one of their fellow players out of there. They didn't want any penalties to give well, a &M any, any room. You talk about the players having experience. Weldon Shelton has been in his position many times. He knows how to take a game and get it under control. Hmm. Start talking to players and say, hey, now settle down. You've had a good football game. Continue to make it that kind of game. All start. Second and ten on the one. But for the Aggies, it's the wrong one. Wilson breaks forward to the ten and almost gets it to the first down yardage. Wow. Del Dunn was the last man that could stop him before he got past the yardage. Uh, Wilson really gets him out of the hole here with just good hard running again. Razorbacks keying on the other receiver. Now that with that carry, Wilson goes over 100 yards. 16 carries for 107 yards. You know, conceivably the way this is going, Greg, we could have three backs for the Aggies go over 100 yards this game. Well, they did it. I believe it was the first game of the season. One of them was not the quarterback, though. Did not did get it. it. Did not get it on third and one. The Arkansas defense stops him again. Look at the replay. Watch the penetration of the Arkansas defense. Oh, what a great yeah. play by Chad Rowland. Chad Rowland got underneath it, made it go up and in the air, and then the linebackers make it. Watch Rowland, number 51, get penetration right there. Throw his, throw his legs up underneath it, throw him backwards. I don't think they'll go for it on fourth down this time in this position. Arkansas could have great field position after this punt. Sean Wilson is capable of booming it, and he gets a pretty good distance, but it's low, and it is not fielded by Burris, and there goes the field position. The Aggies will kill the ball at the 35-yard line. Burris didn't want to take a chance on it. He lost about 15 yards. We'll take a break with A&M leading 20-10. Flautas, tostadas, mmm, fajitas, tostaditas, rosaritas. Senoras, senoritas, flautas, tostadas, tostaditas, enchiladas, burritos, it's a bean thing. Flautas, empanadas, gimme, gimme, gimme some. Huevos, rancheros, tamales, tostadas. In Mexican cooking, it all begins with beans, rosarita, refried beans. I like it. Play from scrimmage and a completed pass to Russell. His first catch as he beats Chris Crooms and the Razorbacks have the ball past midfield. Well, that takes advantage. They had a great 55-yard punt. They hit him backed up, but the first play they come out with play action, fake the play action, come back off of it, hit Russell coming across inside to the middle. Big 25-yard pickup for him. Of course, that gives them the field position that they thought they were going to get before the punt. Two speed burners now on the near side with Caldwell and Russell both eye formation on first down. Ball at the 40-yard line. Edie Jackson as he blasts forward for about three as he's inside the 40 to the 37. Anthony Williams, the first man to hit him. Less than seven minutes to play. Williams is from Waco Jefferson. Uh, Moore High He's a poultry science major, which I must admit is one I've never heard before. Hey, that's a big thing, poultry science. Well, it is. I didn't know he could major in it, though. Well, the new new breed of ostriches and inus, et cetera. Why, that's going to be a big thing in the future. You get a credit for any class dealing with an egg. Second down and seven. 
tipped and incomplete. Actually, he was lucky. There was nobody there. Crooms and Harton were close, and the intended receiver, Botkin, was covered pretty well. He's probably just as well. That one didn't get through. It kind of, if it had gone farther, it might have been intercepted. Yeah, a lot of pressure on him. They anticipated the, the bootleg rollout and had good coverage downfield. Of course, they're in a position now that, that you can't play things safe. If Arkansas needs to get points. If one touchdown doesn't get them back in the game. They need two scores to get back in the game, so they can't play conservative now. Demetrius Smith is a speedster. He's at the top of the screen with two wide receivers near side that are quick. Grovey. Yes. Russell for the first down. Horton tackles him at the 21-yard line. Now, this is the one phase of the Arkansas game that is actually better this year than it ever has been, and that is the passing game. Oh, he did a great job of putting this in there. There were three defensive players right around this pass. He drills this one. Don't get credit for his arm. Look at the speed of that ball getting in there. There was a lot of white jerseys in position to get their hands on the ball. They just couldn't react quick enough. That's a big first down for the Razorbacks. On the AM 21-yard line. <laughs> to the 10-yard line. First down, Arkansas. Aaron Jackson this time. Horton and Frazier with the double team stop. Now there's a senior that wants to go out with some class and pride. What's the effort? He should be hit right here. Now there's going to be another missed tackle. Watch him break this tackle, drive hard, keep going to pick up yardage. That's a senior making that final effort the last time he's going to play in this stadium. Arkansas for the year averaging only 3.6 yards per rushing attempt. They've been better than that in this one. First down on the 11. Gain of three. A very hard hit. On the ball carrier, uh, Kirby, by Anthony Williams. Been a good, clean, hard-hitting football game by both teams. There's only been one penalty early in the game. Slips the shoulders right up in there. Anthony Williams, of course, wraps it up. We are somewhere in the five-minute area, we are guessing. Well, that's the other thing. Arkansas can't afford to keep that clock running. They've got to get in the end zone quickly. Russell and... Aaron Jackson can't get to the five-yard line. It'll be third down and a gain of one and a half. Williams with the stop. Needless to say, this is a two-down situation, but they've got a bit to go because it's going to be third down and just about six, almost five yards officially for a first down. Well, let's don't speculate, but it could be an interesting fourth down call. Caldwell and Russell wide near side. Demetrius Smith can barely hear the signals on the top of the screen. Late handoff, and Kirby doesn't get much of anything, and it will be fourth down. Now, Greg, this is interesting. You see, if they take the field goal here, it pulls them within a touchdown. You've got a two-point conversion. Jack Crow may want to think about this. They've got a two-point conversion, of course, in the college game. Somewhere along the line, he has to get the field goal. It's fourth down and about four. If he doesn't, those points and if he doesn't make it of course obviously that really hurts him but if he takes the three now they get the ball back and they can score again go for two they can win the football game that's the advantage of the college college game and it is true they got to get two scores obviously the easiest one to get is the field goal but you can't guarantee you're going to get either one so you, you, he's got a decision to make well uh, and the worst part about this if he goes for the field goal and they make it the fans will be unhappy but it's not a bad strategy move here right now because it would assure him of getting points out of this drive you know fourth down the ball's on the four yard line there's no assurance that he can pick up these three yards to get it the first down or get it in into the end zone the three points are almost for sure this is a tough tough decision now, I think he's going to go for it but <laughs> the fans would be probably very unhappy with it yeah he's Two going for it it would appear simply because as we talked about before they don't have a whole lot to lose but if he doesn't make it on this on this play for all practical purposes the game is That's almost right. over if There's he takes only... the three he's got a chance to fight down the end of the end of the ball game I, again i kind of try to say both sides of that i i'm sure he's going to go for it with groby in there probably be some kind of option rollout with groby having the 
hands on the football and making the decision of what to do with it. Three minutes and 44 seconds. We get an update on the time. Fourth down and two. Rovey's in trouble. He's got a long way to run here. To the end zone. Incomplete. Knocked down by Larry Horton. And the pass rush was the key. Aggies came with a pretty much a blitz. Put defensive secondary one-on-one -on -one coverage. Blitz reacted, and Grovey had nothing to do except run around in the backfield. Again, this is kind of a rollout option pass or run, but of course you can see Thomas up on his face on one side, and you can see Buckley coming from the other side. Both outside linebackers keeping him contained. A little sh little shove in the back there. Open secondary in an end zone, but the but he's looking for the ball. But the, tell you the, the Aggies defensive personnel was looking pretty much for him. Now it's a long pass. They have a chance to recover. Mm -hmm. Fumble on the first play. Arkansas has the football. Oh, my. They will get their second chance. Del Chun recovering the ball. Think they'd like to head those three points now, Greg? Boy, what are the odds of that? It's on the 12. Of course, they wouldn't have gotten the ball here on the 12 after they got the three points, but sure, they'd like to have them. Yes! To the three-yard line. That's close to a first down. Lindy Lindsay with the catch. Depends on the spot. Looks like they pushed it back to the four, so it will be a second. Clown and about two. Clock is running all this time now. Clock continues to run. Now there's a, well, they've said they finally made a first down. They stopped the clock. It is a first down. Fraction, it is a first down. Arkansas needs to score quick. We've got somewhere around three minutes, probably a little less left in the ball game. Aaron Jackson is dumped by Anthony Williams. Oh, my. <laughs> I, I tell you what, he come off, he read that. Now, Frazier backs, of course, are going to have to take a timeout. Take a look at this. He come off, off the corner. He scraped foot. He called scraping right off your defensive lineman. He did. Got upfield. Got it underneath the legs. What a great play by Anthony Williams. Turned about as fair play. Two minutes, 14 seconds. Is that right? 242 is correct. I don't know why they, they stopped the clock, Greg, and didn't. I don't think they charge Arkansas all the time out. Second down. Got to get to the two for the first down. Edie Jackson is real close. They'll stop the clock here because they're going to probably have to measure, but we'll find out. Larry Horton with the tackle. Don't think he made it? Oh, he made it. Greg, this is the, they made the first down. It's going to be third down and two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, on the previous play. And the clock continues to run now, though. Arkansas should think about using those timeouts. They've got two of them. The clock is running all this while. Roby's got a hole. The pitch goes in for the touchdown to Caldwell. Caldwell, the flanker around, and it is a touchdown, Arkansas. Just an excellent play, excellent call. Run the option, bring any receiver back on the option play to make the pitch to Caldwell, and he takes it in the end zone. Now that's a freshman run taking an option pitch. Boy, just a great call. Celebrated just as his head was being torn off. One minute and 43 seconds to play. Now, now they're probably going to go for the 
Well, uh, I think they're going to go for the two point like conversion they, now. It's like they are. Well, it, it appears they're going, uh, golly. I guess his thinking is if we score another touchdown, we win anyway, and I don't want to tie. So you go for two, and uh, if you don't make it, the field goal doesn't do any good. Difficult choices that a head football coach I guess. has to make. Very but now again, these are these are also decisions you don't necessarily make the same way if you're not two and seven. Exactly, your record has a lot to do with this. Grovey in trouble. Throws it up for grabs and it's intercepted by Horton and no conversion. Now what this means On is Arkansas kick. has to score a touchdown to win. But either way, you were going to probably see an onside kick anyway, I believe, Greg. Well, yes, and as I'm saying before, if they get the one point, it's a three-point game, and all they can do, a field goal is only going to tie them. They're not thinking of a tie. One to throw a quick pass out to the right. There was coverage. They had linebackers butch. You see William say, well, watch him get rid of this ball. He says, <laughs> hey, I got nothing to lose. Throw it up for grabs. Maybe something good will happen. And alertly, the interception by Horton. That's really true in more than one way because even if he throws it up for grabs and it's run back, it's only two points and they're still going to need a touchdown. Well, this all boils down right now to whether they can recover the onside kick. We're talking about, we think, a minute and 43 seconds to go in the football game. They have two timeouts left. They could, if they don't recover it, they could use their two timeouts and still get the ball back, but they'd have a long way to go. This again is an interesting decision. The onside kick and the Aggies get it. They got it way up near midfield. You kick off deep and you stop them. Now you got a chance maybe of getting good field position. A lot of decisions have to be made by head coach. We saw an interesting onside kick attempt in one game in which the kicker tried to pop it 10 yards over the front line of defense. That was dependent a lot on what the uh, the receiving team how they lined up. And then, of course, the one that really seems to work the most is where you kick it so that it will bounce. They tend to take a high bounce right about the 10 yard line, and then it's like a jump ball. Well, that's the one that you talk about where the kicker puts the ball straight up and down, and he hits it on the about where you would say a circle on the upper three quarters part of the ball. It will take two short bounces and then take the high bounce. Let's quickly go down to Bill Land on the field. Thanks, guys. Boy, there's some big hitting going on. John Miller got knocked woozy on that last play. He's getting some oxygen right now. Hopefully, he'll be all right. Hope he's able to remember how this one ends. Here this comes the onside kick. Going to try to hit it on the point and get the big bounce. Didn't get it. Derek Frazier has it, and a &M has the football. Kevin Smith, sorry, number 26 has it. And so A&M will have the football at the 43-yard line, and what their job is is to kill the clock. Well, Kevin's just decided they started. He wanted to run with the ball, then all of a sudden he said, wait a minute, I better do anything, nothing foolish. My coach will really holler at me if I run with this thing and fumble it. Let's get down and give it to the offense. I'm a defensive player. 20 to 16 with one minute, 40 seconds. That took just three seconds. Now, there's one timeout left for each team. The Aggie timeout, not important. Did I say? And there's no gain there for Simmons. Accepting the clock is running now, you see. Arkansas should have gotten away from him. Once the whistle blows, get away from him. Get back. And now I notice on the scoreboard they had ones on both timeouts. Now they have a two under Arkansas. So they've got two timeouts left. I'm a little surprised that they haven't used one here, Greg. The clock is running all this time. Maybe the scoreboard clock is wrong. Maybe that uh, we, we've got two and one. Darren Lewis, they want to push him out of bounds, and they do, and that'll stop the clock. Lewis carries a lot of bounds by four. And it'll be third down. Tell you what, Five. Arkansas is one play away from getting the ball back. Tell you one thing. So Arkansas football team today did not play like a 2-7 football team. They have played extremely hard. They really laid it on the line. And regardless of the outcome, 
Bob Toledo says, Coach, I told him, don't go out of bounds. He's telling Varsity, the head coach, offense. This coach, last thing we said, don't go out of bounds. 57 seconds left in this football game. Third and five. They're a long four. And Richardson's going to throw. What a gunny call this was now. Remember, Arkansas makes an interception, takes it all back. What a gunny call by Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator. Great confidence in Oliver and Richardson. Like clockwork, though, when it's third and long, Oliver gets the football, and the penalty is going to be against Arkansas. Now just worked down, worked it in the zone again. And Oliver, eight catches for over 100 yards, like 101 yards. He certainly has had an outstanding game today. And Arkansas still has the timeouts to use, but it isn't going to matter now because they aren't going to have the football. They, they'll use them here on this defensive stand, but... Well, I'm sure their thinking was not to use the timeout on first down, and if they stopped them on second and third down, to use those... Use the timeouts. Well, if they could have stopped them on the last play, they would have had some time. They could have used one, and they would have been able to uh, move the ball down the field. Now, Bucky Richardson just on a quarterback keep. Well, clock continues to run. Yeah, we're... Um, now, I think they finally have there's, the there's a timeout, but we may be down to almost the last play. Well, they... No, they're running the clock again. They have not called a timeout, Arkansas. Officials just gave him time to unpile, Greg, and then he, he wound the clock again. This game is all now. The official says, "What's the game may be over." Ten seconds left. I told ten you, seconds game. left. The game is over. No, it is over. So much for the ten seconds. Well, the Aggies have to take a deep breath, but they win it. And they snap that string here in Arkansas. They win a game in Arkansas, the next to last year that Arkansas is part of the SEC, er, part of the SWC, and also the last time that Arkansas will face the Aggies here in uh, Fayetteville or even Little Rock. I'd like to thank Arkansas Sports Information Director Rick Schaefer for his help, Texas a and SID Alan Cannon for his help. And, of course, all of our crew. Once again, tonight's final, Texas A&M 20, Arkansas 16. We'll be back in just a moment. new central air and our bills are really down exactly must be a Lennox. charlie the johnsons are having something delivered mm -hmm. it's a new air conditioner that's nice dear what system so great they'd buy it this early must be a Lennox. Hmm. must be a Lennox. The Aggies win it 20 to 16 and a squeaker over Arkansas, a thriller here in the Ozarks. Down on the field, Bill Land with a, a coach that has to be relieved. At least he's got another W. No problem, huh, RC? Just another easy victory. Well, AM hasn't won here since 1967. We knew it wouldn't be easy. They've got too many players off of a team that won back to back championships. Guys like Quinn Grovey, uh, what a great player he is, and a whole bunch of their defensive players back. So, this is about what we expected. We, we came up here knowing it'd be a dogfight. It's their last home game. Uh, great crowd here today. It's a good football game, and we we're pleased to win the football game. It's another Southwest Conference win. Well, Coach, everyone expected a great rushing game, but we saw quite a combination with Richardson and Oliver today. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think uh, Bucky did an excellent job of throwing the football today, and Gary Oliver has been uh, a very consistent receiver all along. If you get the ball around him, he usually comes up with it. Enjoy this one. We will. Be a fun <laughs> trip back. Thanks, Thanks. Coach. R.C. Slocum, and rightfully so, very happy. Next up, TCU. 
Thank you a lot, Bill Land and R.C. Slocum and his football team picking up a big victory, 20 to 16. And uh, Arkansas now has just one game left in Southwest Conference play this year, and that's against SMU next week. And uh, that's going to be somewhat tough because they're going to be, if they've not been discouraged before, this is going to be discouraging because they bounce back after a couple of tough games, bad games, to play pretty well today and still can't get enough. Well, they had great effort, don't they? Give this kind of effort next week, you'd think they would win the football game, but they really, the seniors wanted to win their last game. Tremendous effort. Aggie's happy that they, since they have won here since 67, that they get away with the win. Sure do. We'll be back after a final break. The Aggies win it by four, 20 to 16. 